memory system. Oh. Like, oh, she had been down about four times. Oh, and a lot of stuff and everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I said enough of this kissing and hugging stuff. Yeah. Passing stuff. Good morning, everyone. Good, Good morning. morning. Glad you all could make it. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good Brother Randolph, can you start us with a prayer? Oh, sure, yeah. Thank you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. We are so thankful to be in your brother and first year that we had together together here for Sunday school and worship service. We just thank you for lying us here to say we just thank you, Heavenly Father, for all that you have done for us through your Son, Jesus Christ. And through your teaching and your ministry, Heavenly Father, we pray that as your teacher uh, and your ministry, teach the word from your Bible, Heavenly Father, that we will fly to our daily lives and be strong brothers and sisters in Christ and be able to cheer others along and encourage others and to put on Christ through water baptism. We also pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Randolph. Yeah. Uh, deals with uh, our speaking, uh, the words that we speak. And as you can see on your sheet, uh, there are very many uh, verses in the Bible that teach us how to uh, conduct ourselves when we're speaking to others, uh, how to uh, think about uh, uh, what we're going to say before we say it, uh, how to be mindful that we can uh, cause a lot of harm uh, with our choice of words as well as do a lot of good with our choice of words. Mm -hmm. So it's just a reminder uh, to uh, think before we speak. Mm -hmm. So we can uh, uh, get started with James, my favorite book. James uh, speaks to how powerful the tongue is. Mm -hmm. Uh, and before I, before I get, I guess, get started with James, just to point out that the tongue doesn't do anything uh, that the mind doesn't tell it to do. So that's why some time back we talked about this thinking, you know? So we have to have the right mind uh, if we want to have the right things coming out of our mouth, right? It starts with our thinking. Let's go on with James yeah. 3, 2. I'll read it for you. James 3, 2 to uh, 3, 10. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and able also to bridle the whole body. So we, James is saying that the, the tongue is the hardest part of our body to control. We'll move on to verse 3. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouths that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold also the ships, which though they be so great and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, whither so the govern governor listeth. Again, he's talking about how a small part of things is able to control much bigger things. Mm -hmm. how the bit in the horse's mouth uh, allows us to control body. which direction the horse is going <laughs> to move. Mm -hmm. Let's move on, verse 5. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasteth great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. For every kind of beast and of birds and of serpents and of things in the sea is tamed and hath been tamed by mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. 
James is telling us, you know, be mindful of how you speak to people. That's right. You know, because the same mouth can speak good or bad. And you'll see my favorite verse when we get to Proverbs. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. Mm -hmm. You know, watch what you say. Because the words that you speak becomes ingrained in your subconscious and becomes who you are. Yeah. People program themselves uh, through their speaking. So they'll take a doctrine up and start saying it over and over and over again, and it becomes, and it becomes them. them. That's right. So be mindful. That's why we have all the scriptures tell us, seek ye first the kingdom of God. You know, keep, uh, keep the scriptures in your heart so that when you do speak, uh, you're speaking in a spiritual manner. Let's move on. 1 John 4.20. I'll read it for you. 1 John 4.20. If a man say, I love God and hate his brother, he is a liar. Mm -hmm. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not. not seen? Telling us, you know, not use harsh, harsh words towards other people. Show love in our words. Yes. Show care in our words. Let's move on to what Jesus said. Matthew 12, 34. Old generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, Speak good things, for out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. That's what I was kind of getting, getting uh, at. That what's in you is what's going to come out of your mouth. That's right. Okay? Don't need to blame it on somebody else, right? It's what's in you. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So our job is to uh, fill up mm -hmm. our inside with spiritual and good things yes. so that that's the only thing that comes out of us when mm -hmm. we yeah. speak. Then we don't have to worry so much. Mm -hmm. We don't have to calculate so much when we speak if we're only full of goodness. That's if right. Mm -hmm. of, that's right. That's the only thing that's going to come out. Matthew 15, 11. Jesus, Jesus again. He says, Matthew 15, 11. I give you a minute to get there. Matthew 15, 11. Not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man, but that which cometh out of the mouth. This defileth the man. Mm -hmm. The confusion in his day. Put more attention on uh, the food uh, that goes in the mouth than on the words that come out of the mouth. And Jesus is saying, the food's not defiling you. You know, it's your it's evil you. words that you're speaking is what's defiling you. Mm -hmm. Jesus is speaking about the soul, yes. you know, not the body, not the flesh. You know, they were concerned about defiling the flesh. Jesus is concerned about defiling the soul. Mm -hmm. You get that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Move on, Matthew 15. Oh, okay, I read that 15. Let's move on, Matthew 15, 16. I'll, I'll read it for you. Matthew, Matthew 15, 16. And Jesus said, Are ye also yet without understanding? Do not ye yet understand? that whatsoever entereth in at the mouth goeth into the belly and is cast out in the drought. But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, theft, false witness, oh, yeah. blasphemy. These are the things which defile a man. But to eat with unwashed hands devoured not a man. I'm talking about the soul, not the flesh. The concern is always with the soul, mm -hmm. not, not so much the flesh. 
not to say that the flesh is not important, because the soul uh, dwells uh, in the flesh. That's so right. that, you know, we, we want to take care of the flesh as best we know how. But it is not our, it is not the top priority, what Jesus is saying. Mm -hmm. It's always our soul and our spiritual relationship with God. It's what's most important. In other words, Jesus is saying, if we can get uh, uh, our spiritual relationship with God uh, right, if we can get that right, then the Spirit will guide us to take care of our oh, flesh. That's right. Okay? The Spirit, if the Spirit within us uh, is as strong as we want it to be, it will not let, not let us do harmful things to our body. That's Amen. right. It will guide us away from it. Amen. So much wisdom in the scripture, mm -hmm. you know, always seek ye first, you know, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all the other stuff that you need to do will be taken care of. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so that was Matthew 15, 16. So then the saying, you know, the tongue uh, reflects what's in the heart. You know, so we can change what's in our heart by dwelling and studying on the scripture. Studying on what's good will fill our heart up with spiritual things. And then we won't have to worry about slipping um, with the tongue. Yeah. Because, you know, what slips is what's in there. Right? <laughs> That's what right. Is what's in there. So Amen. our goal is to fill up with the goodness um, that's in the scripture. Let's read Proverbs 16, 24. Proverbs 16, 24. I'll read it for you. Pleasant words are as a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and health to the bones. Pleasant words. Mm. Speak pleasant words and people will respond in a pleasant manner. Mm. You know? You want to start a fight, you know what to tell people, right? <laughs> so that's what it's saying is that, you know, in our speech, um, we choose uh, pretty much what kind of day what kind of outcome. Mm -hmm. You know, how we, how we talk to people, how we treat people. It's going to determine what kind of day we have. And we know as Christians, we're supposed to be building people up, especially our brothers and sisters. So we want to always use the words to build people up, esteem others, to build them up, not to tear them down. Same tongue, right? Yeah. So we can choose to tear people down or we can choose to build them up. Right. We are guided in the scripture to build people up. Mm -hmm. So if we want to build up ourselves, we have to do what's written and build up other people. Okay. Let's read on Proverbs 25 and 10. Proverbs 25, 11. I'll read it for you. A word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in pictures of silver. There's two Proverbs that speak to uh, why we should speak good words to other, to other people. And here's a proverb that speaks about uh, speaking evil words. Proverbs 29, 20. Seest thou a man that is hasty in his word? There is more hope of a fool than of him. Mm. Proverbs 29, 20. I'll read it again. Proverbs 29, 20. Mm. Seest thou a man that is hasty in his words? There is more hope of a fool than of him. Mm -hmm. You know, they flip out, quick mm -hmm. to say before they think. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. that's what they're talking about. Let's move uh, back to Proverbs 15, 26. I'll read it for you. Proverbs 15, 26. The thoughts of the wicked are an abomination to the Lord, but the words of the pure are pleasant words. Okay. Always speak pleasant words. I will hold to be pleasant. Love demands that we be pleasant when we care about people. But we have the free will uh, to choose. So we want to 
use that free will and choose to do good. Let's move on. Matthew 12, 36. It's a reminder. Matthew 12, 36. I'll read it for you. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. Mm. Every word. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Is that a reminder? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Be mindful about how we speak to people. Yeah. Let's move on. My favorite verse, Proverbs 18.21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. In other words, you know, a lot of us uh, grew up hearing stuff like, uh, if it ain't one thing, it's another. If it ain't your mother, it's your brother. It's, it's going to get worse before it gets better. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't for bad luck, I wouldn't have any luck at all. We heard all of this stuff. Yeah. Listen to the word. It is speaking death to your life. Yes. That is all negative thought. That's right. That is all negative thought that many of us heard uh, in our short time in the world. Mm -hmm. And you see what it does if you uh, accept that uh, uh, way of thinking, mm -hmm. uh, you actually uh, bring death into your to life. That's right. Okay? That's why we're reminded to seek ye first the kingdom of God, right? So that that form of negative uh, thinking uh, is not from God. That form of negative thinking is from people that don't know God, okay? Man. They are looking, uh, trying to operate with their five senses and mm. thinking that they don't have any way out, mm. no help, no, no way out, you know, to get out of a bad situation. So they... Uh, make the situation worse uh, by saying more negative stuff, right? Because it manifests. Worry and doubt is not from God, okay? Mm. Worry and doubt is from the world. So all of those examples I gave you is just feeding worry and doubt, okay? A lot in a few words, very powerful scripture, Proverbs 18:21. Death and, and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So then we've all met people in our life that were always positive, always looking for something good to happen. And we saw those people just skate through life, right? Yeah, because they're always looking for good. They're never looking for bad around the corner. They're looking for good. They're looking for a way out. When I, every class, and I took many classes, many books, every one, I always saw myself passing. Whatever test they gave me, when I walk in the classroom, I saw myself passing. I rarely, there were a few times, I rarely walked in scared to mm -hmm. take the test. Mm -hmm. You know? It's like you have to believe that goodness is going to come your way. If you do uh, the things that we're told to do, then you have every right to expect that you're going to have a good day. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so we can baby step, you know, have a good day, mm -hmm. you know, then you have a good week mm -hmm. and a good month and a good year and a good life if you do the things that we're told to do. Yes. Right? Amen. No need for worrying that. Yes. He's saying that he can God got our back. You know? We don't we don't have to be worried about anything. You know? Mm -hmm. Know that he's gonna bring us through whatever mm -hmm. we deal with. Yeah. We can move on. Proverbs 15.1. I'll read it for you. Proverbs 15.1. Another uh, uh, example of the wisdom uh, in the book. A soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. I was just saying a few minutes ago, if you want to start a fight, you know what to say, right? You know how to provoke people, you know. Uh, and, and 
with, you know, with uh, a, a little thought, you know, you know how to put them at ease mm -hmm. uh, and make them, how to esteem them and lift them up. You control your day with your thinking first and then with what you say. You control your day. Sometimes it's good to just be quiet and don't say anything. Oh yeah. You know, if you can't if you can't think of the right thing to say, yeah. sometimes it's better to just uh, uh, you know uh, be quiet. Yeah. Yeah. And just say, oh well, you know, don't <laughs> don't get into an argument. With That's people, right. You know? That's right. Just say, oh well, you know, hope you get out of that situation soon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because. Jesus said he speak to those that have an ear to hear. Mm -hmm. People can't always hear what you're saying. You know, even if you are saying it in a loving way. Mm -hmm. you know, they can't always hear what you're saying. So just try to continue to say whatever you say uh, in a nice and loving way. It's what these, this lesson is about. Proverbs 15.2. I'll read it for you. Another example how the tongue can be used wisely or foolishly. Proverbs 15, 2. The tongue of the wise uses knowledge aright, but the mouth of fools poureth out foolishness. Again, the tongue speaks what's in the heart. So our goal in this life is to fill our heart with spiritual things, the goodness of God, so that when the tongue works, it only uh, lets out the goodness of God. Mm -hmm. Another uh, misuse of the tongue is what we talked about before. It's the spreading gossip. Proverbs 20, 19. I'll read it for you. Proverbs 20:19. He that goeth about as a talebearer revealeth secrets. Therefore, meddle not with him that flattereth with his lips. Mm. So when somebody brings you some gossip about somebody else, let it end with you. That's right. You know, find a way to let it end with you. Tell them that you know that that you you can't believe that that's possible. You know, tell them that. You know, that person must have been having a bad day. Mm -hmm. Don't take that and, and carry, carry it on to somebody else. Yeah. Let the gossip stop with you. And if you make that a habit, uh, yes. people will stop bringing you gossip. Yes, yes. 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 Amen. And sometimes <laughs> Brenda and I say, we don't know what's going on in the church. <laughs> and, and sometimes I'll say, we better all. <laughs> And then sometimes I'll say that and she'll say, she'll say, you know, we're better off. Yeah. You know, so we're like, keep each other in check. You know, that we don't want to know uh, the, gossip the gossip that's going on. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because from that little game that they had in the elementary school yeah. uh, where they would line the kids up, 15, 20 kids, however many in the school, the teacher would tell the first student something, mm -hmm. and then they're supposed to pass it on. By the time it got to the <laughs> end, it's, it's all wrong, all <laughs> yeah. stuff. Yeah. So we know what gossip does. It That's comes, right. Gossip most times is not 100% true. That's right. So, you know, we have scriptures uh, about that too. You know, if it's not 100% truth, that means there's some lying in there, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what uh, untruth is, is a lie. So we have scriptures to tell us what's going to happen uh, to liars. They will be sent to the lake of fire, Ooh. it says in Revelation. Let's move on. Okay. As I said before, the tongue speaks what's in the heart. So Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians 10, 4. How to focus on 
colon R plus. Second Corinthians 10, 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. It's telling us to fill our mind up with spiritual things. If we fill our mind up with spiritual things, then the tongue will only speak love in a loving, nice manner. Yes. Yeah, because that's what the spirit is about. That's right. Let's move on. Proverbs, go back to Proverbs 23, 7. More wisdom. Proverbs 23, 7. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. Proverbs 4.23 Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Mm. He's telling us that through our choices, uh, um, come the issues of each individual's life. Yes. Through that individual's choice. I'll read it again. Yeah, Keep thy heart. Thank you. Proverbs 4.23. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. What's in your heart? What's in your heart controls how you walk, controls how you talk, uh, controls pretty much every aspect of your life. So we have many scriptures tell us to seek ye first the kingdom of God. Make, make God the focus of our life, mm. fill up with the goodness from God, and then all of the issues of life, uh, uh, all of the bad issues of life uh, will go away. Okay, the struggle is, the struggle is in our thinking. Mm. Uh, another way of saying in our heart. Mm -hmm. What's in our heart is what causes our problem. And so our job in this world is to make our heart one with God. Yes. Yeah, like Jesus. Our, we want to strive to be one with God. That everything we do, uh, is everything to please that God. we say or do is pleasing to God. Mm. Didn't we talk about pleasing God yes. a couple weeks ago? Yes, that's yeah. right. That's what we're supposed to be thinking about, pleasing God. So if we think about pleasing God, then we won't do stuff uh, That's not right. to start arguments uh, and put people dead. Okay? That's not pleasing to God. Amen. Let's move on to James 1.5. James, James 1, 5. James 1, 5. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that give it to all men liberally, yes. and upbraid it not, and it shall be given him. So where is wisdom coming from? God. You want to know what to say? How to respond to people? The word of God. Yeah. Who yes. can tell you how to do it? Who can give you the idea of what to say? The Word God. of God. Yeah, ask them for wisdom. Yes. Whatever the situation is. Stuff you don't understand. Hmm. Let's move on. Ephesians, Ephesians 6, 4. Dealing with uh, raising children. Teach them to be mindful also what they speak. Ephesians 6 4. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. In other words, we don't constantly beat up on our children with negative words. Mm -hmm. Okay, putting them down. Okay. Because the negative words are harmful.
don't uh, correct them when they're wrong. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying that uh, praise them when they do good. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Let's move on. Proverbs 10, 17. I'll read it for you. Proverbs 10, 17. He is in the way of life that keepeth instruction, but he that refuseth, but he that refuseth reproves error. This is a follow-up with uh, uh, don't provoke your children in the wrath. It's talking about you know that power that is in our voice uh, to put people down or lift them up. So, are you saying, in other words, if you don't teach the child when they're doing something wrong, let them know they're doing wrong, that you're causing error, error, reproof of error? Can you explain that, 17? I got it highlighted for some reason. It excited me. <laughs> I got it highlighted. He in the way of life that keeps the destruction. So you're doing what's right. He is in, he says he is in the way of life. The way of life is the way of God. Mm -hmm. that speak, you know, he's talking speaking death to your life or, yes. or life to your life. Mm -hmm. He he is in the way of life that keepeth instruction. Okay, that's the good so, thing. You know, if you uh, want to live uh, uh, the abundant life, mm -hmm. then you must do uh, what God tells us to do. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you refuse this, you reprove error. Okay. That's a good start. He that refuses reproves error. Yes. Mm -hmm. <coughs> It's just another way, uh, more uh, complex, complicated way of saying that death and life is in the power of the tongue. Mm -hmm. It's just another way of saying that. Another example, Acts 17.22. You know, flows, follows right along with that. Think, don't always tell people, don't focus on uh, people's faults. Mm -hmm. Let them know from time to time that they're doing something good. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Acts 1722. <laughs> Acts 1722. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious. For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you. So he's showing criticism, uh, but at the same time, uh, many examples were all pointed out uh, good stuff that the churches were doing. Okay. You okay. Let's move on. James one nineteen. James points out that most of our speaking is the response to what we've heard somebody else say. So in a conversation, we hear what the other person says, yes. and then we speak. Yes. So James 119 is saying, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, that every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. So James is saying, you know, be careful uh, in your listening. And we had a class on listening some time back. Be careful in your listening that you hear what's being said. Because many times 
uh, people will respond and let you know that they that really they didn't, didn't hear you yeah. because of their response. Mm -hmm. So James is telling us, you know, uh, listen carefully uh, and then speak. Be swift to hear. Focus more on your hearing uh, and be slow to speak, slow to respond. Let's look at some more Proverbs uh, that show us the benefits of choosing our words wisely. Proverbs 10.19. I'll read it for you. Proverbs 10.19. In the multitude of words, there wanteth no sin, but he that refraineth his lips is wise. Don't be the one that always has something to say. My, my grandmother used to say a lot of stuff over the top of my head. I didn't know what she was talking about. <laughs> I remember like eight, 10 years old, she would say, a person that talks all the time will tell a lie. <laughs> and that just, that just came back to my mind. So in her version, it's saying the same thing as Proverbs 10, 19. And he that refraineth his lips is wise. It shows that you're doing more thinking than you're doing talking. Let's move on. Proverbs 13, 3. Proverbs 13, 3. He that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life. But he that openeth wide his lips shall have destruction. This is the wisdom from the scripture. It's amazing how, you know, anything, any aspect of our life, the scripture speaks to it. Yeah, yeah. All That's areas. Right. I'm sorry? All areas. All That's areas. right. Yeah. Nothing left Let's move on. 1523. Proverbs 1523. A man hath joy by the answer of his mouth, and a word spoken in due season how good it is. Mm. Mm. If you speak life to your life, it brings you joy. Yes. He told us, death and life is in the power of the tongue. Make a habit of speaking positive, making positive confessions. Make a habit of uh, focusing on spiritual things. Make it a habit, and it'll bring joy just said, a man hath joy by the answer of his mouth, right? Mm -hmm. So if you make a positive confession, it's going to make you feel good and bring you joy. And people are going to want to be around you, right? Yes. So if you walk around saying it's going to get worse before it gets better, uh, if it ain't one thing or another, you're going to run everybody <laughs> away from you. Nobody want to be around you uh, if you're going to be talking that all day. And we've met people like that. Yeah. That hardly ever have anything good to say. Yeah. They're always speaking gloom and doom. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And yeah. they don't understand that they're bringing more on. So it's like make a, make a habit of making positive blue confession. And it said, you will have joy. Yeah, just in your speaking. Because you're speaking, um, Brother Matthews had a class talking about the inner man. What do you speak with your mouth? It's going to make the inner man believe what you're speaking. Yes. So then, that's the danger of speaking the wrong thing. You understand? Yeah. Good. You're a good class. You know everything. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Drinking it in. I'm sorry? Drinking it in. Yeah. Yeah. Make a habit, you know. Make a positive confession. And you will make your inner man believe it. What you speaking? Yes, ma'am. But you know, Brother D, mm -hmm. uh, I wish I had known all this stuff when I was young. And you my were, kids you didn't have a year to hear when you were younger. And yeah. my kids were small. Yeah. You know, I sit back sometimes now and think, I wasn't a bad mother. Mm -hmm. But when I thought I was doing a good, all good thing, mm -hmm. it wasn't enough for them. Mm -hmm. You know, like my daughter tells me now, I work two jobs to support them. Right. No welfare, and I work two jobs to support them. Uh -huh. I didn't have enough me time for them. Right. I didn't know anything about no me time. Right. 
My mother didn't give us no me time because there was too many of us. Yeah. And my father died when I was 14. Yeah. And there was a lot underneath me. So where did me time come from? I didn't have no me time. Yeah. Well, but different. I did what I had to do for them. But Yeah, it's different. You know, yeah. Where, where yeah. you grew up, um, the kids didn't have all the distractions that they right. had. Then. Right, right, so, right. So see, you working two jobs and then Satan and all his people surrounding them, mm -hmm. filling their head with a bunch of foolishness. You but know? I pray, you know, they are good kids now, though. Even yeah. Rand's a good kid. I'm not going to look so far, you know, the yeah. old road. That's good. But um, I wish I could do things different. Yeah, we, all wish, like I know we all wish that the wisdom yeah. that we have now, we yeah. had it when we were three right. years old. That's right. right. Yeah. You know, then, then we, we have a, a very yeah. different yeah. life, all of us. Yeah, that's maybe, right. It might be arrogant. Because <laughs> arrogant. Right. Well, yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> but we all wish that we could go back to right. what, what yeah. we know now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We wish that we could go back and do it again. That's true, in the, in the sense of being able to help someone else, right. like you yeah. were talking yeah. about. Mm -hmm. so, I those, so those that we come across that have an ear to hear, uh, we share with them what we know now. Mm -hmm. yeah. and maybe they can avoid you know, some of the struggle that we went through. Right. <laughs> Let's move on. Proverbs 17, 27. Proverbs 17, 27. Mm -hmm. He that hath knowledge spareth his word, and a man of understanding is of an excellent spirit. Even a fool, when he holdeth his peace, is counted wise. And he that shutteth his lips is esteemed a man of understanding. This is saying, be quiet and nobody will know if you're a fool or not. <laughs> <laughs> but if you open your mouth, then everybody's going to know. Oh, cool. <laughs> That's the sound of something else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we're the whole thing. <laughs> While you keep your mouth shut, shut, yeah. nobody knows what you're thinking, that kind of stuff. talking about Christians too. Yeah. He's saying go to that Listen person to first. Mm -hmm. Go to that person first. That is the direction for the scripture. Mm. So people don't always want to do what the scripture says do. Yeah. You know, they start with the gossip. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's not, you know, what the scripture tells us to do. Let's move on, Colossians 4, 6. More wisdom in the scripture, Colossians 4, 6. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. It says always with grace. 
So always means that never a situation that is without grace. Colossians 4, 6. Mm -hmm. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. So if we got tempers, we need to lose them. He say, let your speech be always with grace. It's not leaving any situation where your speech can be without grace. That's what I read, always with grace. Mm -hmm. So we, if we have tempers, we need to pray on it to get rid of it, right? Man. Job 6.6, 6. can that which is unsavory be eaten without salt? Or is there any taste in the white of an egg? Just, you know, explaining what season with salt. Salt makes things taste better. Yes. Matthew 5.13, I'll read. Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost its savor, savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is this for good for nothing, yeah. but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. So we're the salt of the earth. We can't lose our paper. Let's move on. First Peter, First Peter three fifteen. First Peter three fifteen. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. He's telling us how to respond with our tongue, with meekness and fear. Sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. Fill up your heart, your mind with spiritual things. And that'll be the only thing that comes by way of your tongue. can't come out of you if it's not in you, right? Right. So our goal is to fill up with what should be coming out of us. If we fill up with the good stuff, the bad stuff will get pushed out. Okay. So you all were quiet today, and that allowed me to go through every verse that I picked out. Good stuff. And you got your paper when you have time. Uh, to go through and reinforce mm -hmm. yeah. so you can help some of these bad talking flip mouth people uh, know uh, that the Lord is not happy with it. Mm -hmm. It's all here on this sheet. Mm -hmm. Let them read it for themselves. Amen. Yep. The Lord is not happy with evil communication coming out of our mouth. Mm -hmm. yeah. And our job in this world is to please God. Yeah, so I just showed you he's not pleased uh, with foul mouth uh, speaking. Let us end with a prayer. Father in heaven, thanks so much for giving us thanks so much for giving us all the strength to come together this morning to study your scriptures and learn how to be the kind of Christian that you want us to be. I ask that you watch over our brothers and sisters on the way to the building ask that you build up, strengthen the sick and shut and that they can join us once again. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for that lesson. Hey, brother. Thank you.